It's Cinewhoop Week here on my channel, and that means I am reviewing four Bind and Fly slash Ready to Fly Cinewhoops. The Diatone Taycan, the iFlight Bumblebee, the Holy Bro Copus Cinewhoop, and the Rotorite Chendrone Squirt. And today, what we're going to do is look at the configuration of these quadcopters as delivered and see which vendor is delivering like a refined pro-grade configuration versus somebody who's just tossing the beta flight defaults at you and leaving all the work to you. But relax. I'm also going to show you my setup for these guys so that if you did get one that the vendor didn't really set up right, you can rely on me. Well, anyway, that's the hope. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Before we dive into the configuration of these Cinewhoops, I want to tell you, if this is your first time setting up a, a, a quadcopter, I've got a list of videos down in the video description that I think you should check out because there are a few things that you need to know, like, like how, to, how to bind the receiver, how to set up the flight modes, and so forth. And these are the same for every Betaflight quadcopter. And as tempted as I am to just make a detailed setup video for every single one of these, like 85% of the stuff in that video would be the same between all of them. And it just, it's just not a good use of time to make the same video four times for four different quadcopters. So setting up flight modes, setting up your transmitter, binding your receiver. These are all things that are linked down in the video description. And if it's your first time, go ahead and check out those videos. There, there's more there than that, but it's other things that I'm going to talk about throughout this video. And rather than repeat myself, which as you all know, I hate repeating myself. I really, I just like to make the most efficient use of my time. I don't like to just say the same thing again and again and again and again and again. Just go on and on. No, I would never do that. Now, this video is going to be a little bit long and you might only care about one of these Cinewhoops, the one that you've got. If you want to skip to a particular one, there are links in the video description to timestamps. I put a little table of contents in there so you can skip ahead if you want to. In addition, I've got links in the video description to my final config dump. I'm hosting those on a website called pastebin.com, which just, it holds text files. And I'm actually building up a library of config dumps from every quadcopter that comes across my bench. So you may see that there are a few little tweaks in there that I've made since I posted this video. If I come up with improvements for the configuration of these quadcopters, I'll update the config dumps up on pastebin.com. The links are down there. And if you if you just want to like, just give me your config, Bardwell. Well, okay. But do make sure you read the config because some of my configs have a few little weird things in them that might trip you up. I've made notes in the config dump if there's anything there you need to know about. So here's the first thing I notice about the Holy Bro Cinewhoop. We're going to go to the ports tab. And the first thing I notice is that <laughs> there's no MSP set up. That's interesting because they've got serial receiver set up. That's fine. But MSP is needed to get the battery voltage and the OSD into the air unit. All they had to do was enable the freaking option and it would be ready to go. So I don't know why they wouldn't do that, but they didn't. Go fig. Good thing I'm here. Good thing I'm here to help. So our UART1 is going to have MSP enabled. Holy bro. Motor throttle idle of 2.5%. That's really low. I wonder if this is going to have problems with like falling out of the sky if we do snap rolls and flips. Do you do snap rolls and flips on a Cinewhoop very often? I don't know. Here in the configuration tab, arming angle of 25 degrees. We're always going to change that to 180 degrees to let us arm the quadcopter even if it is not perfectly level. Over here on the left side, we've got 8K, 2K. There's absolutely no reason to run 8K, 2K since we're set up to run D-Shot. So I'm going to change that to 8K, 8K. I assume this is an F7 processor. We should be able to run 8K, 8K, no problem. Telemetry is enabled, but there's no reason to do that because, because DJI doesn't use telemetry. So we'll, there's no harm to have it on, but well, I'm going to turn it off. There's no reason to have it on either, I don't think. Air mode is on. That's good. I like that. Here we are in the receiver tab, and that's as good a time as any to go ahead and bind the air unit. So let's do that. We're bound. Let's check the channel map here and see if it's correct. Throttle, yaw, 
Endpoints are, yep, endpoints are correct. Channel map is correct. That's good. One of the mistakes that I wondered if anybody was going to make was to ship the DJI unit with the incorrect channel map because you should know what the channel map is going to be because the DJI controller is always going to default to the same thing. Stick low threshold of 1050. The, almost ev literally every DJI quad I've set up has had the endpoints within two or three milliseconds of correct. So it would be absolutely safe, safe, I think, for Holy Bro to ship this with a stick low threshold of like 1010, and that would get rid of some dead band at the bottom of the uh, of the throttle. Here in the modes tab, we've got an arming mode. That's fine. Any horizon mode? I don't know anybody's going to fly a Cinewhoop in horizon mode. So in my opinion, that should be horizon mode or it should be arming mode and angle mode. We can go ahead and set that up. So right now the way they've got it set up, armed is pulled towards you. I like to have armed be pushed away and disarmed pulled towards. And the reason for that is it's easier to disarm by just sort of slapping the switch towards yourself. And I feel like that's more important. So arm pushed away, disarm. And then aux two is gonna be this switch. Aux 4 and turtle mode is going to be aux 2 or aux 3 and all the way down. I'm going to real quick recap this because I haven't shown this in any other videos that I know of. This is how I set up all my transmitters, the, the DJI transmitter, everything. I try and keep my switch positions as consistent as possible. Arm switches in the upper left, push away to arm, pull towards to disarm. This switch here on the face is acro mode, just nothing. Angle mode in the middle position, turtle mode went down. And this switch here on the corner on most of my transmitters, this is a momentary switch and you pull to beep, make it beep. I set the buzzer here and then it releases itself. This is not a momentary switch here. And I just, yeah, this one here, I think is a momentary switch and you might could assign beeper to this one. But again, I feel like the muscle memory is more important than the switch functions. That's it, that's basically how I set up all of my quadcopters and you're going to see me do that throughout the rest of the video. The last thing we got to check is there's a thing that every manufacturer of a DJI flight controller ought to be doing if they don't have an analog OSD chip on board and this flight controller doesn't. It's not designed to deal with analog signals at all so it doesn't have the analog OSD chip. Betaflight assumes that the analog OSD chip is there and if it's not there then you can get slow boot ups it takes, takes longer for your flight controller to initialize. You can get inconsistent loop times, which is a big deal if you're trying to do bi-directional D-shot and you need consistent loop times and you can get high processor utilization. Holy Bro should have already done this. Let's see if they did. Yeah. So this needs to be set to zero. So we're going to do set max 76 SPI bus equals zero and save. Oh yeah, this is Betaflight 404. Well, I... I'm going to give Holy Bro the benefit of the doubt and assume that if we were to flash Betaflight 413, the very latest version, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that they fixed this in that one. But since we're on Betaflight 404, this hasn't been fixed and you got to fix it yourself. Okay, here is the Diatone Taycan. I'm going to see how it looks from the beginning. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and check the receiver. Since my endpoints are set correctly on my radio, I'm just going to set the stick low threshold to 10.05 and save. Here in the configuration tab, we're set to DSHOT 600. That's great. Bidirectional DSHOT has not been pre-configured. We're on Betaflight 410, so we could be doing bidirectional, but they haven't set it up that way. We are set to 4K 4K, which is what's recommended for beta flight on an F4 processor today. SBUS receivers pre-configured. That just started working. That's good. Soft serial is enabled, but here in the ports tab, no actual soft serial ports have been assigned. So I don't know why they did that. That's pretty weird. We're preset to have the motors beep when the failsafe happens and when we activate the beeper mode, that's good. This quad comes with a beeper, but the beeper is not pre-installed. You have to install it yourself if you want to. Why not pre-install it? But if you're not going to install the beeper, the least you can do is enable these modes. So that's good. The PIDs are at default PIDs, so they haven't changed the PIDs at all. The rates are at, yikes, 
Okay, well, they have tuned the rates. Wow, 280 degrees per second. They have these rates super low. Have they got any rate profiles? That's just defaults. Default. So they've tried to give you like some Cinewhoop rates, like really cinematic rates. I'm probably going to change that out and just put my default rates in because I want to just try to fly this thing, at least at first. Filter settings. Filters are also at defaults. And here in the flight modes, I'm just going to delete all the default modes and set up my own because they I'm not particularly, I mean, whatever, you're going to need to do that anyway. And here is my Betaflight configuration template. I'm going to just grab my aux modes here, copy and paste my aux modes in. Here's my OSD configuration and my rates. And we'll just check my flight modes here. This is my all aux, all flight modes on one aux channel setup. Arming. Yep, looks good. Modes are correct. Okay, this is the iFlight Bumblebee configuration. D shot 300. Okay, it's an F4. We have, oh, bi directional D shot enabled. Damn, iFlight. Damn, iFlight. You're going hard. I love it. 4K, 4K. Wow. Now, telemetry is set up. Telemetry is set up, but there is no. Uh, smart port wire, smart port is not, so there's no reason to have telemetry enabled. Unfortunately, that they ship an RXSR receiver without smart port. <clears throat> is there a beeper? No beeper, so it would be great to have RX set uh, so that we could have motor beeper. Okay, great. Now we can have motor beeper. Should really have RX failsafe too, honestly. That way we'll get beeps when we fail safe. But uh, a lot of people don't like that, so we'll leave it off. They do have some customized filter settings though. So that's interesting. We'll try those out. And now let's check out the Rotoriot Shindrones Squirt. Here in the ports tab, MSP is enabled, so the VBAT and OSD will work, as well as Serial RX. Here we've got 8K and 8K as our loop time. That's uh, correct for an F7. Might be a little much for an F4, but presumably they know what they're doing. DSHOT 600, correct, and uh, RPM filtering not enabled. Max arm angle of 180 degrees. Here in the options, we've got air mode. We've got RX set, so we have motor beeper. And um, not RX lost, so we won't get beeps on failsafe, but okay, that could go either way. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? Here in the PID tuning, they've raised the feed forward, but all the other PIDs are on default. So they've tweaked this a little bit, but they haven't done an in-depth PID tune. Uh, here in the rate profile, how are they using the default rates? They are not 800 degrees per second. So they've tweaked the rates a little bit to, you know, presumably for whatever they think is good. Uh, and here in the filters, they are on the stock default filters. So no changes there. The channel map is correct for DJI, and they've set the stick low threshold correctly to get rid of dead band at the bottom of the throttle. The modes here are preset, and I like the modes they've chosen, but they, um, they're not exactly the way I set them up, but they have selected the four modes that I typically use. Just the switch positions are the same. And finally... When I first looked at this OSD, I was confused. I was like, what are they doing with the OSD? But then I realized the DJI goggles can actually display some of the Betaflight OSD elements, and Rotofriot has set that up. What you have to do is, in the goggles, bring up the menu and go to Settings, and then go to Display, and Custom OSD On, and then it will show the Betaflight OSD elements as set up there on the Betaflight OSD tab. This is really cool that beta, uh, that Rotoriot has done this, and I really dig the way that they've set up these individual OSD elements to, to sort of line up with and be logically placed relative to the pre-existing DJI OSD elements. If you have a DJI quad, definitely go down and pull this OSD setup from my config dump, which is linked in the video description. So now that you've seen me set up all these quadcopters, or maybe you just skipped the whole thing and skipped to the ending, <laughs> what's the final word on which of these shipped with the best configuration? Before I give you my opinion, 
let me just say, if you are trying to set one of these up from scratch, here are the general steps that I think you should go through. Number one, set up your receiver, get your receiver channel mapping and your receiver endpoints working correctly. Number two, set up your flight modes, arm, angle, turtle mode, and beeper mode to me are sort of the most basic ones. Number three, in configuration tab, set DSHOT 300 if you have an F4 processor or DSHOT 600 if you have an F7 processor. Set gyro and PID loop to either 8K, 8K for an F7 or 4K, 4K for an F4. Set small angle to 180. Set the motor beeper on if you don't have a beeper like a Hellgate installed on your quad, but it's a good idea to, to install that kind of beeper. Number four, set up the OSD however you like it. You can steal my OSD configuration if you prefer. Number five, it's not absolutely mandatory to do this, but you will get much better flight characteristics if you set up RPM filtering and bi-directional D-shot. And I was a link in the video description to a video about how to do that. And number five, yeah, no, that's, that's basically it. Go fly. So which of these quadcopters came closest to delivering what I think is a really good default factory config? I have to say that the iFlight Bumblebee takes the prize here. The iFlight Bumblebee shipped with a complete custom setup made by one of their test pilots and engineers. It is the only one that shipped with RPM filtering enabled. That is a lot of extra work they had to do at the factory. It's actually not that much extra work. Why isn't everyone doing this? For goodness sakes, the Holy Bro shipped with Betaflight 4.0.4 on it. Now, doesn't mean it's going to fly worse, but it does mean that they, they could have taken the step to create a new image for this stuff and flash it before shipping, and they didn't. So custom PIDs, custom rates, uh, custom filter setting, RPM filtering enabled. The iFlight Bumblebee has the most sophisticated high-performance default tune. The second place I have to I have to give it to the Rotorite. And for the price of the Rotorite, you would hope that they would deliver something that was really had a lot of personal touch. The Rotorite Shendron Squirt is just literally hand built by a guy in the uh, in the Rotorite warehouse. Every time you order one, they just sit down and build one. It's hand built, it's hand configured, it's test flown before they send it out. They really ought to be way up high at the top of this list. Why aren't they shipping with RPM filtering enabled? They know that it's good. Well, I really liked that they had clearly set almost everything the way that I personally think it's best to set it, um, in including the customized DJI OSD, which is a really nice touch. Between the other two, the Diatone Taycan and the Holy Bro, I feel like the Diatone... I feel like the Holy Bro was the worst of the three. It didn't even come with the MSP protocol enabled. So you won't, it ships with DJI. It ships with the DJI air unit. It doesn't even have the option to buy it with an analog system. They don't even sell it that way. It's not that I can find. So there's no excuse for them not to ship it completely specced out exactly right for DJI. And you obviously need battery voltage in your freaking goggles in order to not kill your batteries. So. That's what. That's how I rank them in order of configuration. The iFlight Bumblebee, the um, Rotoriot Shendrone Squirt, the Taycan, and the Holy Bro. But none of that matters if at the end of the day, they don't fly well. Where the rubber meets the road. And that is the video I'm going to release tomorrow. How do they fly? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you missed any of the videos in this playlist of my Cinewhoop Week Roundup Giant, bleh, bleh, link in the video description to the playlist where you can see all the information you could possibly want to know about these guys. I'm having a lot of fun making this. I'm looking forward to showing you to tomorrow's video where they fly. It was going to be today's video, but I realized there's a few more tests I need to do and it wasn't time to get it out. So look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching. Links to blah, blah, blah in the video description and... Happy flying.